So these days, many people are buying 80s cars like this E30 BMW. However, with cars that are 30 plus years old, there's a lot of things you need to look out for before making the purchase. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at many things that you should know before buying an E30 BMW. So if you know anything about E30s, you will know that rust is literally the biggest killer of these things. And unfortunately, there's a lot of places it can build up. Um, I'm gonna start with sunroof cars. A lot of E30s were optioned with sunroofs from factory. And basically there's a seal that runs around that shrinks over time. And what this means is you get water ingress underneath the sunroof itself, which in turn leads to rust developing both in the roof skin and the sunroof panel. So on mine, I've just recently fixed the rust actually on the sunroof and it was pretty badly rusted on the underside and I had to cut out quite a bit of metal, weld in some new stuff. Um, and I used a fiberglass filler and a couple of the smaller holes as well and then got the thing resprayed. And that has fixed it for, should be a number of years. Another major point on the E30 is the jacking points, which sit at the front and rear of the car. And essentially these rot away with time. Obviously they're exposed to probably the most salt off the road, the most dirt and a lot of water as well. And they just tend to rot away. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are gonna find out about this when they go to jack the car up and the jack pierces through. So it's always good to check those points. You can just have a feel around and I'll show you some images of what that should look like now, because I'm lucky with mine being quite solid. So another major point on the E30s is the scuttle, which runs underneath the windscreen and also the, the area that runs around the uh, window seal itself. And obviously, again, you're going to get a lot of water that trickles down into here and may sit on the scuttle itself. Again, this was a place I had a small hole in here that I've now fixed. Um, but it's really important to check around the seals itself because you may have a hole that sits on the scuttle panel but it's really important to check in and around the window seal because that can hide quite a lot of rust as well. And if you've got rust all around the windscreen in this whole sort of frontal area, that can cause a lot of structural issues. So it's really important that those things get checked. Now, this is something that's specific to the E30 Touring models and it's to do with the tailgate. And essentially what you've got is a rubber seal that runs around the window, of course. And again, this can shrink up over time, which allows water ingress in and around the window. So obviously that watering gas over time would probably go unnoticed, but eventually you're going to start to see bubbling on the surface of the tailgate panel itself. And this can be a lot worse than it looks on the surface. And it's something that you probably won't notice really until you start to take the window out and it could look a lot worse. But there's several areas you can check. You can look in and around the seal. And if you see any signs of rust, that could mean there's water ingress there. You can lift the tailgate up and look around the edges. Um, and also just the sur window surrounds as well, just to make sure there's no bubbling and things there. So the valance is an area that runs basically below the rear bumper and front bumper. And it's just a strip of metal down here. It's about a four inch strip of metal. And this can rust out from the inside. Again, you just get a lot of dirt and water build up on the inside of that that you wouldn't necessarily see from the outside. And over time, this just rots it away. And it's something that can be hidden. So it's probably best to have a look underneath that if you can uh, and just look for any clear rust signs and things like that the footwells on the e30 are another place that are very well hidden by the massive carpet and interior trim and again that's somewhere that rust can pretty easily build up and it's very important in the driver's footwell specifically where the throttle pedal actually mounts to the floor and if you have sufficient rust around there it can pretty much become completely unhinged which you know it's not the safest thing that you want and it's not ideal so a quick test that you can do with this is just to put your hand on the carpet and feel any dampness or even if it pushes down much, that would be a suggestion that you may have a hole or something. You can also crawl underneath the underside and have a look and see if you can see through, uh, but it's definitely worth doing that. Same with the boot floors as well. If you can lift out any of those carpets, that would be great. And uh, you can get a good look down into the boot floor and see if there's any rust that uh, lies under there as well. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, there was a wide variety of engines that came on the E30s. Um, most people are probably gonna go for the M20 engines, which is the 320i and the 325i, and also if you're in the States, the 325e. Uh, so these are the six cylinders, as I say, it's an inline six engine. And the important thing with these is it's actually what's known as an interference engine, which means the valves and the pistons actually have a crossover in their paths. This therefore means that timing belt changes done frequently and as per the recommended schedule from BMW are very important because if that timing belt snaps, 
basically what's going to happen is the valves are going to collide with the pistons and that's going to cause catastrophic engine damage like pretty much say bye to your engine if that happens so it's very important that's done frequently and if you're looking at buying one of these look for evidence of that i would also recommend doing it as soon as you buy the car anyway just so you've got a good baseline that's what i did with mine it's actually not too bad a job i had a lot of rusted bolts and rounded off bolts on mine so it took a while to get those off but in terms of technicality it's really not that difficult um so yeah definitely recommend that and while you're doing the timing belt it's worth checking water pump changes as well the water pump basically sits below the cam gear itself and basically you can only access it once you've got all the timing covers off and uh, all the cooling system out so it's important to do that at the same time now on other engines in the E30 things are a little bit different so on the M10 engines which had a chain driven valve train it's important to check that this is in good condition around about 100,000 miles this thing's probably going to be reaching the end of its life so if you can buy one that's already had that uh, that changed uh, I would definitely recommend doing that. I've not done that myself. I don't know how easy a job that is. I imagine it's probably more difficult than the belt. So the M40 engines are also belt driven uh, in terms of their valve train. So they're going to follow very, very similar timing schedules to the M20 engines. And again, you want to make sure it's had frequent timing belt changes, probably frequent water pump changes as well, and just good maintenance schedule overall. That's the main thing. These engines are well built. And if they're maintained properly, they'll go for a long time. One other thing that's quite personal to my situation here is the manifold. Now, if you can buy a car that's already had the manifold changed, I'd recommend going for it because I've just found out that one of my uh, manifold studs is broken on the rear end. So, I mean, I'm not going to address this now because it's not too big of an issue. I've got a slight exhaust leak from there, but it's nothing too bad. So essentially when the stud breaks, it can be quite a nightmare to get them out, depending on sort of how far out the head it is when it's broken. And it can result in the head having to come off and that would then result in timing belt changes again. So I'm going to leave mine as is for now. And I'll probably come to fix that next time I do the timing belt change, which will be three and a half years or so. The E30 BMWs were quite technologically advanced for their time. So there's a lot of old electronic systems on this, um, but they were very well built. So one thing you need to be sure of is just make sure everything's working. I mean, everything that it came with from the factory should work electronically. So your windows, if you've got the um, little chip computer thing, that should work. Although it's quite common for the screens to break on those, although you can get replacements. Um, and yeah, everything else, all your lights should work. And you've also got the check control panel on top, that should also work. So basically what I'm saying is, just make sure there's no obvious electrical gremlins because that, can, that could mean things like a degraded wiring loom, which in turn could be quite dangerous i suppose from a fire hazard perspective so yeah you just just have a look around check all the lights check the windows work just things like that if you know anything about e30s you'll know that oil leaks are a massive issue as they would be with any 30 year old car in fairness but there's a lot of places they can come from and to be honest, on these M20 engines, stuff like a sump leak is an absolute nightmare because the engine mounts to the subframe. And what happens is if you need to change that sump, the whole subframe's gonna come out. So it's not a small job. So you wanna just have a look underneath and see if there's any oil leaks. It's quite normal to see some oil, but you know, if you've got an active leak, uh, i.e. dripping on the floor, if it's left for any period of time, that's gonna be an issue. So yeah, oil sump is one of the big ones. You can also have leaks from the uh, rocker cover gasket, the issue with that is it can leak down into the timing belt covers and then it can start to degrade the timing belt itself and as I mentioned earlier you don't want a timing belt to break on an M20 engine or the M40 engine for that for that matter so yeah just have a look underneath and have a look under the bonnet as well and just look for any oil leaks like I say the active oil leaks are going to be the biggest issue you may also see oil leaks from the diff and the gearbox it's quite hard to see the gearbox just because of the uh, heat shields and things and the exhaust but you can have a little look underneath with a flashlight and uh, you should be able to see if there's any active leaks from that. The diff, very easy to see. You can just have a look under the rear valance. And uh, again, that should be pretty dry. So most of these, as you'll probably know if you're looking to buy one, did pretty high mileage. A lot of them are over 150,000 miles, definitely over 100,000 miles. And with that, you're gonna get quite a lot of drivetrain wear. So things to look out for, obviously, is the clutch, the gearbox, differential, they're the main ones. Now, it's quite common on the E30 BMW to have drivetrain noises, so a bit of diff whine 
when you get up to speed and also a little bit of gearbox whine first or second gear but the important thing to note is this should not be loud so obviously these things are pretty normal on older cars it's not really e30 specific but on a 30 year old car you want to be aware of drivetrain issues and things like that just make sure the clutch doesn't slip it has a decent bite and there's no kind of shuddering or any dodgy noises coming from any of the drivetrain components The E30 BMW has a front and rear subframe setup, which means you've got suspension components essentially mounted separately from the chassis of the car. Now with high mileage, obviously these things are gonna degrade and become sort of less tight over time, and it's gonna make it feel pretty sloppy. So in the rear end, you have a rear subframe, basically around about just in front of the rear axle, and it's just a rubber bushing. So this can wear out over time and it can make the back end feel pretty loose and you might get knocking and things like that. So make sure you test drive the car if there's any suspension noises that's uh, usually a pretty clear sign things are either worn out or you might have broken coils it's also known for the uh, front struts to fail and again this will be pretty noticeable because you'll have loud noises going over bumps and things will just feel sloppy these things should feel tight almost like a modern car to be honest they really don't feel their age so yeah make sure you test drive the car make sure it feels good going over bumps and that it's not wallowing around too much as well because that would suggest shock absorbers and things are gone so that's it guys hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of things to know about buying an e30 bmw but also older cars in general like i say a lot of this stuff will apply to cars from the 80s and 90s possibly even earlier um but yeah honestly i just can't recommend these enough if you want a driving experience that is just that raw feeling and connection to the road um, that would just gradually lose them from modern cars. I think you should really look at the E30 BMW, not to mention you can get them pretty cheap these days and in decent condition. Thanks for watching.